field did not disappoint that raucous crowd with a 9-1 win taking command of this best of five with a 2-1 series lead we got a perfect day for game four the series 72 degrees not a cloud in the sky as the phillies and the braves face off well the braves are going to have to put some pressure on syndergaard and take this crowd out of it this crowd's been unbelievable for noah syndergaard a lot of curveballs against this lineup with Acuna to lead off, then Swanson and Olsen. There's a little change here in the heart of the order. Austin Riley hits in the lowest spot in the order since May. Then Harris, Contreras, Arcia, and Rosario round things out for Brian Snitker. Syndergaard comes home, and off we go with a ball inside. And you're probably familiar with Noah Syndergaard, but this really is a different guy than the one that was a constant presence in the postseason early in his career. Yeah, he just can't rear back and, and let it eat at 98-99. You see 94-95 pitching in a lot and throwing a lot of curveballs more uncharacteristically because he doesn't have that velocity. He can just sit back and let it go. Well, Syndergaard started this season with the Angels. Phillies acquired him at the deadline. Makes his first postseason start since the wild card game in 2016 when he was tremendous. He fired seven shutout innings, but Madison Bumgarner a little bit better that day. Went the distance in a 3 nothing Giants win. So he's become kind of a sinker baller. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely going to split up this uh, makeup of slider, changeup, forcing curveball, and he's definitely going to pitch differently than any time before the Braves had seen him. You know, with the Mets, he was downhill and a lot of gas. He's the hardest thrower in the National League. Yeah. Before Tommy John surgery, forced him to miss pretty much all the last two years. Home to Acuna to start his day with a strikeout. Well, there's the breaking ball. It goes straight down and on the outside part of the plate where you want it. And again, for the Phillies here at home, this crowd has not sat down very often yesterday, and I don't anticipate it today either. So if they get up out to a lead, it's man, it's loud. You could tell they fed off him yesterday. That six run third inning. Got three more in the seventh and a 9 1 win. It's a ball on Dansby Swanson. And John, we talk about the bottom of the order needing to get going for the Braves, set the table for these guys at the top. But these key guys at the top got to do something more, too. Yeah, Swanson really hasn't made that adjustment that he's made throughout the year. Pop fly. Bright sunshine will test Segura a little bit. He's got it marked and two up and two down. And really, it's been just three guys in this lineup. Acuna at the top, and then Olsen and Darno are all producing pretty well, but everybody else slumping at the same time. Yeah, and there's going to be some talk after this year of a new postseason gets flushed out. A lot of the big boys, the teams that have been kind of sitting waiting to play somebody, 5-5 five and five record, I believe, and two of those wins come from Houston. A little bit of rust offensively. Some of the best offensive teams struggling, and really it's come down to the really, really good pitching that has slowed these offenses down. Yeah, they've got the top two seeds in the National League facing elimination here in game four. Braves today, the Dodgers tonight in San Diego. One ball, no strikes on Matt Olson, who's been one of the good components of this Braves offense, reaching in eight of his 13 plate appearances in this division series. A curve lands and it's one and one. Braves putting their hopes in Charlie Morton, who will make his 17th postseason start. On a one one from Cindergaard. Olsen watches ball two. Well, watch that side of the plate where, where Syndergaard's going is where Charlie Morton wants to go. And early on, Syndergaard's been able to stay on plane. It's called arm side fastball, which is in to a right-hander, away to a left-hander. If you can hit the outside part of the plate, boy, is that going to help either pitcher that commands that side. Oh. Three and one. You know, the Phillies put Syndergaard out there in relief. In game two of this series, and he had a scoreless eighth inning against the top of the lineup of the Braves. They were undecided at that point who game four would be for. He kind of earned the job with what essentially amounted to an audition there. 
Well, the Braves hadn't seen him in years. Three balls and two strikes. Syndergaard looking for a one, two, three first. Olsen struggling against breaking balls on the year, only 186. Fouls it off, stays alive. Yeah, Adriel Muto's going to need a minute. Flexing that glove hand. Catch them on the heel. Ouch. You got him right on the wrist. He says he's good to go, and the Phillies certainly hope is valuable of the pieces they have on this roster. Another 3 2. Cindergar with a 1 2 3 first. Rated everyone. The Phillies lineup that throughout this year has shown the ability to absolutely explode, and they've done it in the two wins in this division series. Schwarber finally got a hit last night, and Hoskins and Real Muto. Harper had one of the two home runs. Castellanos has had a nice series. Bohm hit sixth. The rookie Stott had a key double. Gene Segura is at second. Brandon Marsh hits ninth in center field. And so for Charlie Morton, his 17th career start in the postseason, his fifth in an elimination game, two guys have started and won more elimination games than Charlie Morton in baseball history. Kurt Schilling and you, John Smoltz. What's this like? Well, you know, the biggest thing, you can't pitch perfect, not on my watch. Pass the baton on, give your teammate a chance to pitch again. And by doing that, solos won't beat you. You can be aggressive, but if you're trying to pitch perfect, you're going to run the risk of a crooked inning. No crooked inning, meaning solo. I call them solo innings, one run at a time. Keep yourself in it so that your team can kind of embrace the moment. He's done it better than anybody. And look, he has not had a great down the stretch run. But if he enacts that inner Charlie Morton postseason pitcher, the Braves have a chance. Well, yeah, how about when the first guy you've got to face, John, homered against you on both your pitches, your fastball and your curveball, when you saw him last month? Yeah, well, the key, again, I mentioned the arm side fastball. He's got to be able to keep that shoulder, the front shoulder from dipping. He has to hit the outside part of the strike zone that brings his curveball in as a weapon, as a backdoor, mix in a changeup and cutter. The home run hitter is Kyle Schwarber, who takes ball two. Schwarber hit 46 during the regular season to lead the National League. He got his first hit of the postseason yesterday, snapping an 0 for 17. The other key component in postseason baseball, get the leadoff hitter out. And the Phillies have been able to do that a lot. There hasn't been a lot of rallies. By getting the first hitter out, you always feel like you're a pitch away from a double play if the next guy gets in on base. Kyle Schwarber starting the day for the Phillies with a walk. And see, that's where his misses is. His miss is too big wide. It's not enticing for the hitter. When Charlie's on his game, he misses by inches. See how he gets underneath that sinker, and the sinker is so wide that the hitter recognizes it right away. That has been his downfall. He's walked a lot of hitters this year. He has the ability to swing and miss a lot of guys, but he's got to be in the strike zone to fight that fight. Yeah, 38-year-old has the highest walk rate in the National League. Reese Hoskins, who says he's been telling himself, my moment's coming. My moment's coming. This is deals with all these tough moments lately. And he finally had that moment. One that you're going to see replayed for a long time. That home run with a bat slam afterwards. He said he didn't even realize that that's how he reacted. Felt like he was floating around the bases. One of those situations where he kind of blacked out. On a 1 0 from Morton. Hoskins watches another breaking ball away. Two balls, no strikes. At some point today, I mean, Charlie wanted that first pitch. It was really close. 
but he's got to be able to trust his fastball against this team. His breaking ball gets better when his fastballs are thrown for strikes. A lot of pressure on your breaking ball behind in the count. Good fastball there, two and one, arm and, side. And that's the key. And when it clicks for, for Charlie Morton, boy, it is lights out. Because that is a hard pitch to hit. See the sink and late movement at 95 miles an hour. On a 2 1, Hoskins in the left center field. Harris on the move, won't get there. Schwarber read it well. Takes third, and they're at first and third to begin this one. Dream start for the Phillies. Don't know how long Syndergaard's going to go. He goes three up, three down, and then the first two hitters get on for the Philly offense that has been already explosive in big innings. Leadoff hit, hitter gets a walk, and as I mentioned in the postseason, a walk is a rally. And the leadoff man on yep. feels like a rally. And he had two birds with one stone in this inning. Walked the leadoff man, and now they've got him cornered with nobody out. JT Rio Muto coming up. A Phillies offense where there's not much in between. It's been a lot or nothing. With a couple base runners to start and a strike as the curveball finally lands. A real Muto has reached base in all five games this postseason. Knocked in two yesterday with a couple of singles. He's been so good at home. So are a lot of these Phillies. They love hitting at home. Trying to give the Phillies an early lead. One ball, one strike. The Phillies in the first game of this series scored seven runs, one seven six. Then they got shut out in game two for the nine run explosion yesterday. Those the yep. numbers you're talking about. Yeah, and here you can't try to pitch without giving up a run if you're Charlie Morton. You got to somehow induce a ground ball, get some outs, trade a run, but prevent the big inning. Sinker inside, maybe get a ground ball to short. That uh, used to be who Charlie Morton was. They called him Ground Chuck. It was all sinkers. Now it's split. It's been more forcing, less sinker through the years. He's in his 15th in the majors. Prior to this year, he had a run where he was one of the best in baseball. An all-star a couple times. Two world championships. Houston in 2017. The Braves last year. Top five in the majors and wins over a five-year span prior to this year. He fires the one two and gets Rio Muto looking. Well, there he cross fires, misses his location, but he freezes Rio Muto on the outside part of the plate. And if they weren't already standing here, they are now as Bryce Harper comes to the plate. And Bryce Harper's had good numbers. Off of Charlie Morton, hitting over 400. With a home run. Two home runs in this postseason for the reigning MVP. One in the wild card round, one last night. He's looked as good as he has since early on this year. First and third, one gone. Harper swings and misses at a first pitch fastball. It's just amazing what kind of year Harper has had over the last two years. And really the first pitch success and swing and miss is probably the highest of his career. But something happens to where he locks in after that big swing and finds a way to make an in at bat just uh, adjustment off the starting pitcher or whoever he's facing. A day shy of his 30th birthday Harper swings and misses at a fast spot to the other side of the plate. Harper and the Phillies have seen a bunch of Charlie Morton this year. Five starts against the Phillies. He's got a five and a half ERA. And that includes his second to last regular season start here because he did sprinkle in a good start or two in there. But his most recent memory, he gave up six runs in four and two thirds in this ballpark. 
And that one he tried to overthrow. It's going to be a hard double play to turn if it's hit to Arcia because of the shift. Swanson's in a tough spot, not his normal spot to turn a double play. He's going to have a different total angle if the hit the ball is hit on the ground to second baseman. Schwarber at third, Hoskins at first, Harper stays alive. Now the pitch that Charlie Martin will go to when he's connected with his mechanics is that changeup. I mean, we haven't seen any yet, but he's primarily fastball curveball right now. We haven't seen the cutter. And he'd love to get a fastball up over the plate, belt high or above, to get a swing and miss. Struck out Real Muto. Deals one two to Harper and gets just that. Right where he wanted it. And back to back K's for Charlie Morton. That was huge. I mean, that is the only area you can go to Harper right now. And he absolutely dotted it above the belt. Looked enticing. And see that late movement. And that's what got the swing and a miss. And a huge situation for the Atlanta Braves and Charlie Morton if he can get out of this. Really, first and third nightmare a start. And he knows the guy at the plate right now is on go as soon as he steps in the box. He wants to swing, make a quality pitch, you get a quick out. If you don't, one nothing or more for the Phillies. Nick Castellanos, kind of a half hearted swing and a curveball, strike one. Yeah, when you read the headlines the next day, you read the articles the next day, it doesn't always lead with something from the late inning. Sometimes that key moment comes very early in a game. And with the Braves facing elimination, Charlie Morton, who has struggled this season on the ropes early, back-to-back -back Ks against Real Muto and Harper, now trying to get out of it. And ahead of Castellanos, who indeed comes out of his shoes swinging, 0-2. Yeah, now, I wouldn't say this is a dangerous 0-2 pitch, but when you see a swing like that, in your mind, you go, I don't have to throw this one anywhere close. And sometimes in doing that, you get off of the concentration of that. You let one ha hang in the zone. For Charlie Martin, don't throw anything close here on an 0-2 pitch. And he did. And that's the adjustment that you want to see what the hitter makes. If you know a hitter's aggressive, you've got two pitches. Once you get to a two and two count, you make your 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 go pitch. But you got two pitches to see if he's willing to chase. Nick Castellanos, who's described his postseason experience as a clean slate after a rough first year in Philadelphia. Two out chance first inning. Fly ball right field. Acuna shooting his eyes from the sun. He's there. And how about Charlie Morton? After the first two reach, he gets out of it unscathed. First inning. First two reach, and then he retires three straight. The ball came out of his hand totally different after first and third. And, and that's what you have to keep as a pitcher. I mean, not that that woke him up, but what a start for the Phillies and their fans. And then have that kind of sucked out of the, the air sucked out of them not scoring that's big for Charlie and a circle that first inning in your box score in your score sheet no scores Travis Darno leads off this second hitting cleanup as Brian Snicker drops Austin Riley to the five spot today 1 0 from Noah Syndergaard ball too but there's no doubt that the offense for the Atlanta Braves and you can say the same thing for the Los Angeles Dodgers I mean they're not doing what the regular season and that's a big sample side right you get five days off and if you don't get those kind of guys connected in the lineup which is showing on give the Phillies pitchers credit but the offense better wake up for the Braves or they're going home in on Darno in the shallow left field here's Schwarber to put it away So you had three 100 win teams in the National League this year. The Mets already knocked out by the Padres in the wild card round, and the Dodgers and the Braves both are facing elimination today. A lot of pressure. I mean, you know, the format should be set up for the advantage of those teams who got to rest their bull, their bullpen, their starters, and but then you get some teams coming in hot, and, and currently, I mean, series not over, but both teams that won their division are down two games to one. 
But as we talked about, it's as easy as flipping a switch. You know if you win that game, you go back to your ace. That's the thing, right? Game it's five at home. You win the if the Braves win the game today, this completely gets turned around and they're in the driver's seat. Nine innings away from going from having their season in the brink of ending to being like, okay, we got them right where we want them. Riley in the air to center field for Marsh. Two up and two down. Five up, five down for Noah Syndergaard. And for more on Thor, here's Ken Rosenthal. Well, Joe, as shocking as this might sound, as hard as Noah Syndergaard wants through, catcher JT Riamuto told me before the game that the key for Syndergaard today is landing his off-speed stuff, commanding those off-speed pitches. So far, so good. Four of his five curveballs for strikes. That pitch just there, it retired. The batter, a strike also with a slider. This is the key for Syndergaard, a different pitcher than he once was. Curveball at Acuna got him on a strikeout in the first. Michael Harris. Strike one and a changeup. Well, that's the one thing that, you know, you don't know how a hard thrower is going to be able to adapt to this different style that he's been used to, right? And so far, he looks comfortable. He hasn't pitched much. And he's mixing it up very well. Bouncing ball foul and every pitcher whether it's because of injury or just father time eventually gets to that point where if they want to keep going they've got to figure out another way. Yeah but the fear factor is for the hard thrower max effort guys they're never going to get to that point they fall off the cliff. So he'll be the hope for a lot of people if he doesn't regain that 98 99 and can pitch effectively this way. Because it's it's not in their DNA to teach pitching it's stuff and more stuff you know high rep I call it RPM in the zone and when it's good it's great hitters swing and miss 13 strikeouts but now he'll have to kind of reinvent himself Harris on the ground is second Gene Segura six up six down for Noah Syndergaard Get coverage beyond the expected with T-Mobile this postseason stream your team home or away and in the air with free Wi-Fi they got about an hour worth of hitting before the shadows give or take an hour. It's going to be an issue in the middle of the game. So right now best chance to do some damage. Hurry boys both sides <laughs> strike one from Charlie Morton who got out of that first inning. After walking the leadoff man giving up a single to Hoskins Phillies had first and third nobody out. Morton struck out Rio Muto and Harper and got Castellanos to fly out. Alec Bohm leads off the second. Cracks one off Morton. Ricochets to third. Riley's bare hand pick up and throws late. And a flashback to Charlie Morton to the last time he was on a postseason mound when he broke his leg on a 102 mile per hour comebacker. He didn't know it at the time, though. He knew obviously it hurt, but then he throws 16 pitches after that. He strikes out two hitters. And then winds up undergoing surgery and gets a five and a half inch plate inserted into his shin. This one hits him on the throwing arm. Yeah. And the training staff is out to take a look as Charlie Morton, who he used know, to call ground shock, feeling like Groundhog Day right now. The only thing I can say is it luckily wasn't hit super hard. Looked like it was a little bit off at the end of the bat, but nonetheless, it hits catch you on the outside of your elbow and you're just. That's the last place you want to get it to hit. See, almost like the bat broke, but at first I thought it got him off the back side of his back, but we clearly seen right here that it catches him on the outside part of his elbow, which is better than the inside part of your elbow. Colin McHugh already starts to warm. And a Braves bullpen that is in pretty good shape. That is not to say, though, that yeah, this wouldn't be a massive, massive problem. Charlie Morton's got to leave this game. Uh, looks like he's going to be okay. Look, the guy broke his leg and faced three more hitters, struck out two of them, went into the clubhouse after the game and apologized for not going longer with his broken leg. And then had the, during the World Series, with his leg elevated, sit there on his couch and watch the Braves clinch a world championship. In a lot of ways, that was his motivation coming into this year to have a chance to pitch in big games again, to be on the mound again, to help his team in those spots instead of watching from afar. It killed him to do that. 
Well, luckily, that was 72 miles per hour off the bat and not 100. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's watch how Charlie is moving forward. Here's Bryson Stott. And on a day, John, where the home runs kind of stole the show, Hoskins and Harper ripped the roof off this place. Bryson Stott had a nine pitch at bat that, in a lot of ways, was the biggest at bat of the day. Finished it with an RBI double and started that six run rally. No doubt. Uh, that at bat changed the momentum. And it changed really kind of like the aura of what Strider, even though it was only two innings, was starting to have with his fastball in the zone, swing and miss. But he fought off a lot of fastballs, got a slider that he wanted. And really, after that, it was bing, 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 bing. And it was 6 nothing before you could bat an eye. I mean, seriously, five straight hits. On five pitches, it's foul and it's 0 and 2. It's the first time in 18 years, not in the postseason, in any baseball game period of the majors, that a team had five straight hits on five straight pitches. Yeah. To say it was quick is an understatement. It was shocking. And this crowd, I mean, when when Hoskins hit that home run, you could sense that. Uh oh, this this crowd was just waiting to erupt, and they did. It's been a while that this place has hosted some huge games, some world championship games, a clincher. And there are some people saying that that moment, the Hoskins home run, was the loudest single moment in this ballpark's history. Sweet release for him and for all of them. Waiting a long time for a swing like that. Good back foot breaker from Charlie Morton whose early returns after taking the ball off of the elbow are good well, That's as tight of a breaking ball as he's had against a left-hander you Got to make it look like a strike he did and it disappeared out of the zone. That is just Known as Uncle Charlie. That is what he's famous for in creating such tight late break Third strikeout for Morton. Up comes Gene Segura. Like the crowd this weekend, not disappointing. Gene Segura is not disappointed in his long-awaited trip to the postseason, reaching in all five games after 11 years and more than 1,300 games without playing in the postseason. Now this is a guy that Charlie if he makes the right pitch he hits some ground balls you can possibly turn to and I can still run but he does chop some balls on the ground. There's a hot shot by Swanson. Boom heads for third and the Phillies for the second time in his many innings have him cornered. Well he didn't chop that one he smoked it. Yeah. Short to the ball. Didn't give Swanson any time to really react. Watch how quick this is. Watch his hands. Quick to the barrel of the bat. And Bayou. That's a swing that Gene Segura crafted as a kid in the Dominican Republic. Playing baseball, yeah, but playing fast pitch softball, shorter distance. Yeah. Having to have that flat swing to match up with the type of pitching you see in fast pitch softball. Line drive swing. One of the best line drive swings of this generation. Close to a 300 hitter in his decade. So here's another chance for the Phils. And it's Brandon Marsh, the nine hitter. Yep. Got the call there. Strike one. Stu Sherwater behind the dish today. Well, again, Phillies two for two and getting the leadoff hitter on. Creating pressure this time of the year. That's what you got to do. Everything's magnified. Marsh takes the ball, one and one. Marsh has a lot of strikeouts against right handers. He's trying to develop into his big league career, trying to cut down that swing, but 
He like some of the other hitters vulnerable upstairs a lot of swing and miss upstairs above the strike zone. So Martin that. goes and it's one and two. Now it just comes down to executing like Morton did in the first inning perfectly to get out of that jam. But I'm telling you, you can't keep getting in these jams. And Charlie knows that. Bowman third, Segura at first. Morton to the plate with a one two. Brandon Marsh. Got another fastball, fouled this one. See, it's amazing. And the reason this game is so difficult and we have so much information, you're talking about less than three inches to where to throw the ball. But if you're good at throwing the ball at the top of the zone, then you're you're, ex you're exposing so many style of hitters who swing up on the ball and don't try to make the contact by getting on top of the ball. So anything over the middle of the plate, Marsh has a better chance of being successful. But above the belt, same thing with Harper, his success rate goes way down. To throw to first. The one, two, ball two. Brandon Marsh, who grew up a Braves fan in Buford, Georgia. Trying to put his boyhood team in an early hole here. Game four of the division series for the trip to the National League Championship Series. There for the taking for the Phils. On a 2-2 pitch. He lifts one in the air. Deep right field. There it goes. Marsh comes through. The nine hitter for the Phillies with a three run home run. Well, we talked about him not being able to hit the fastball. This is two hitters now in two consecutive days that have hit a breaking ball, sped up their bat. Unfortunately for Charlie Morton, this one resulted in three runs. For Strider, it was only one run at the time, but another crooked inning. For the Philadelphia offense. It was the nine hitter Bryson Stott yesterday that had the key hits. The nine hitter Brandon Marsh today that gets a curtain call after a three run home run. Strike one on Kyle Schwarber. First postseason home run for the guy they brought over at the deadline from the Angels. And they brought him over to stabilize the defense, which he's done. Anything they were going to get offensively would be gravy. They've gotten a lot of gravy. Hit close to 300 for the Phillies. And now this massive home run. Schwarber. Slices one in the air to left for Rosario. Two out. Well, he wasn't able to hit the fastball, but I want you to watch this breaking ball. I mean, it's on a tee right there. For a guy who was late on fastballs, he's early on that pitch. And a huge, huge blow for the Philadelphia Phillies. Put pressure on Charlie for two straight innings, second inning cashed in. What do we hear from him? Brandon, three-run homer. What was it like going around the bases? My legs felt really light there. You know, that's just that's what it's all about, man, you know. You're getting to, you're getting to play in big time situations like this. That's a lot of fun. Really no words right now. What were you looking for there? Obviously, curveball is what you hit. Yeah, you know, you got to stay on his heater. It's throwing 96, 95, 96, 97. So, with some good life. I just saw him reacted. Glad I glad it worked out. Brandon, catch your breath. Good luck. Yes, sir, Back Kenny. to you, Joe. All right, Kenny. And hey, we so appreciate these guys taking the time to visit with us mid game. It's so cool to get their insights right after they produce these big moments.
No balls, two strikes. On Reese Hoskins, who lays off ball one. And for Charlie Morton, 28 home runs allowed during the regular season, career high, second highest home run rate in baseball. And that's what bites him early here in game four. His one two to Hoskins. Well, one of the things that I wrote down when I was going over and watching video was go strike one because he had been really bad on strike one, 58%. It's not high enough. And keep the ball in the ballpark. Well, two of those things have showed up today. And he hadn't been pounding enough strikes. And then that three run homer. I mean, those three run homers are rare in the postseason, but they're killer when they happen. 2 2. Grounder left side. And the shift that's Arcia to get Hoskins. Brandon Marsh, of all people, gets the scoring going with a three run home run, bringing this place to life once again. The Phillies are one away from the National League Championship Series, leading 3 0 after two. Brandon Marsh, three run home run. The Phillies in front 3 0 as we go to the third. Braves offense that was one of the best in baseball this year looking for its first base runner of the day coming off two games where they managed just four runs total it's William Contreras taking strike one from Noah Syndergaard and it's, you said it John I mean it's an offense that over the course of a season even the greatest offense is going to go through a couple games where they don't score many runs like this but you get into a five game series and you run out of time to figure it out. Here's Segura with a backhand play to get Contreras. One gone. Well, early on, Noah Syndergaard's making all his pitches. Defense doing what they got to do. The one thing about Noah Syndergaard, we haven't talked about it because there's nobody been on base, but... He doesn't hold runners very well and it'll be interesting to see if the Braves down three nothing will take advantage of that. I think only three caught stealings against him and you know I know they got JT Riomuto but the numbers are against Syndergaard big time. Yeah those 30 stolen bases by far the most that anybody's allowed this year and it's been an issue throughout his career. Got to get some base runners to expose that. Orlando Arcia off of the bench yesterday had a base hit. Here's the bottom part of the order for the Braves which seven through nine during the regular season they had the best bottom of the order in baseball in this division series they're one for thirty two down there. Arcia turns on it down the left field line that ball's gone. Orlando Arcia with a solo shot. The Braves on the board. It's 3-1. Well, they hurt us. Yeah. Seven through nine hadn't done anything, and that's only their second hit, but that was a run produced really quickly. For a guy, for whatever reason, come postseason time, Arcia finds himself. Fastball in. He just tomahawks it. You gotta pull your hands in, get the barrel of the bat to the ball, and keep it fair. And Arcia does. Yeah, you mentioned him finding it in the postseason. He's now played in 22 postseason games, so it's not a tiny sample. And his on base plus slugging is 200 points higher in the postseason than it is throughout his regular season career. Now the nine hitter, Eddie Rosario, takes the ball. And within this offense, one of the best in baseball we're talking about, they have hit a lot of home runs. They're very home run reliant, which is okay until those home runs dry up. And that's just the second home run of this series for Atlanta. One ball, one strike. Well, the one thing that's going to be interesting about Rob Thompson's decisions today is the and he's in an enviable situation, up two games to one. But you're going to want to go for it right to to clinch it not try to even mess with game five. Well there's going to be some interesting decisions and in how he goes for it. And what high leverage guys he uses in what spots because this will not be like a traditional regular season game. Hey if your starters doing well or this guy's doing well leave them in there's going to be a 
variety of pitchers that pitch in this game for the Phillies. So on the back end, they've got all the guys available. You know, Alvarado, Dominguez, Zach Eflin. The bridge to those guys, Bellotti and Brogdon, he mentioned, but also, and it's Andrew Bellotti who's warming here, Zach Wheeler and Ranger Suarez who started the first two games. One of those two guys, if the Phillies have the lead, probably going to pitch in this game. Popped off the hands and foul ground at first. Hoskins over with room to make the catch. And with that, I think that's where you got to be careful. The, the, it, it, it's tantalizing to want to go to those guys, but you also don't want to upset the flow. If you do happen to get to a game five, you've used a lot of resources that you don't have for game five. Back to the top, Braves to get their second look at Noah Syndergaard, which is already exceeding kind of what they had in mind, which was once through the order. Yeah, it's fouled off in strike one. Strike two. And that's the difference this year for Acuna coming back. He didn't miss a lot of those pitches early in his career. I mean, this guy was thunder right from the beginning. And just, I know he's getting his hits, but just a little bit off with where his power pitch used to be where he did damage. Sometimes it can just be the difference between the bat being more vertical and pointing a little bit, the, the end of it pointing more at the pitcher. Acuna down swinging. Braves though on the board, a solo home run from Orlando Arcia. Two, three, and four coming up for the Phillies. That means Bryce. Charlie Martin just finished off his warm-up tosses, and then Brian Snicker and one of the trainers headed out there. And they're gonna take the ball from Charlie Morton. Colin McHugh is ready to go. Charlie Morton lasts only three innings, or only two innings. And here for the bottom of the third, the Braves already into the bullpen in this elimination game. Colin McHugh, who pitched one and a third, scoreless in the first game of this division series. And they bring him out for the bottom of the third. This is going to be a long road for the Atlanta bullpen today. Here's what happened to Charlie Morton in the second inning. This comeback from Alec Bohm off his pitching arm. He finished off that inning. Went out to warm up for this third. And then Snicker went out there to take him after the warm ups. So just two innings for Morton. Yeah, not what they were hoping for. And certainly, Colin McHugh, I mean, he's smaller version of Charlie Morton when it comes to spin and breaking balls and he'll throw a lot of them he'll throw hardly anything straight 35 years old and he's put together quite the career it started back in 2012 with the Mets and over his first couple seasons uh, it, it was looking like he wasn't going to get much more of a chance first two years he was 0 and 12 with a 9 ERA with the Mets and with the Rockies. He got claimed off waivers by the Astros before 2014. Put together a couple of great years there. And then dealt with some injuries. Went to the Rays last year. Pitched out of the bullpen and had a great season. And has had a really nice year in Atlanta. On to face the heart of the lineup. JT Real Muto. Then Harper. Then Castellanos. Oh, one ball, no strikes. About half his pitches are a slider and 48% uh, to be exact. And opponents only hit 150 against it. So it's a different look. He comes out of a lower three quarters, got great spin to it. Almost looks like a breaking ball at times, but he throws it a lot. Well, even with uh, essentially bullpen game yesterday with Spencer Schrider starting the game, the pen is in a pretty good place. And the Braves have Jake Odorizzi and Jesse Chavez. Partially to thank for that. Those two guys combined for five innings to finish the game. And so a lot of the key pieces for Atlanta are good to go here. 
Fly to center field. Harris on the move. Still going. Michael Harris can't get there. And Rio Muto can run for days. JT on his way to third. He looks for it inside the Parker. And the catcher has won. Inside the park, home run for JT Real Muto, and the Phillies lead 4-1. Jay Wright loves it. Well, this ball's hit pretty far, and I don't know where Acuna was, but he got to try to get over there to help out your center fielder. If the center fielder's got to go get that ball and Acuna's not crashing towards it, with the speed of Rio Muto, almost the easiest inside the park home run you're going to see. When that ball's hit, Acuna doesn't take any movement at all towards that center field. And by then, it's too late. Don't know if it would have mattered as much, but he needs to be sprinting over towards the center field action because he had a play to help out potentially and he didn't move one ball no strikes on Bryce Harper and these two highly anticipated days on in Philly filled with iconic moments now you got the home run yesterday from East Hoskins the inside the park home run here from JT Real Muto and moments they're going to be talking about for years I mean, he's in no man land right there, right? Kind of misstep. He was trying to jump, but his run wasn't allowing him to get there. And then he knows right away he hit it good. So he's not in a full sprint yet. Right about now, he's in a full sprint when he sees that ball go off the wall. Rio Muto, the fastest catcher in the majors, one of the fastest players, period. Strike one on Nick Castellanos. A great athlete who in high school was a star quarterback as well. Kind of a local legend in Oklahoma. He had 45 touchdowns and won a state championship as a quarterback. No balls and two strikes. He's also a state champion wrestler in high school. Wrestling was kind of the family sport. His uncle, John Smith, was a two time Olympic gold medalist as a wrestler. Uh, to play the position he plays and catch as much as he does to be in shape with his legs pretty impressive It's the third inside the park home run of his career Three in one career for a catcher He's not your average catcher though one ball two strikes McHugh throws and Castellanos chases two out but again, to reiterate, you know, there's a play for everybody. I mean, everyone's moving when a ball's like that. The position, the position players, the infielders, you cannot assume anything. And I don't know, again, I don't know if it would have made a difference, but to be able to help out your center fielder for caroms like that is the reason why the corner outfielders always got to be in play. You cannot assume that it's going to be made or that the ball's going to have a traditional bounce. And that's about really the only spot, right, with that angled wall where you could get a carom. You could get a carom off that center field kind of lower fence. But strike one on Alec Bohm. And the Braves, 101 wins. Division champs for the fifth consecutive year. Now facing elimination, something they didn't face in a world championship run last year. No team has repeated since the Yankees won three in a row, 1998 to 2000. Hard thing to do. And the Braves finding that out very quickly in this follow up trip to the postseason. Still a long ways to go in this one, but down 4 1 and what has turned into a second consecutive bullpen game.
Well, from this point on, unless some kind of life gets injected in the Braves offense, you almost feel like now Snicker has to approach the bullpen as he can't give up another run. I mean, that's the goal anytime any pitcher goes out there, but now it's going to have to really be kept to this four run spot because anything more is going to be a daunting task with what the Phillies have in the bullpen available to bring in as well. I haven't been able to say that too many times in recent years what the Phillies have to bring in the bullpen. No they made some adjustments they had to work some things out and they've kind of done that and you know credit them it's been the storyline for two and a half three years and they're tired of talking about it and when Joe Girardi was here I mean there weren't nothing went right for that bullpen and it and that that takes the life out of your ball club when you you're supposed to win a lot of those games and they weren't winning those games and of course that reason they didn't make a lot of playoffs. Boom down swinging that finishes off the third but the inning begins with an inside the park home run from JT Real Muto. Everybody's having a good time in South Philly this weekend. Kyle Schwarber and the Phillies up 4-1. Turn to the postseason goes three innings here. Gives up the solo home run that is it. Faces ten batters. Hands it off to Andrew Bellotti so this is going to be a battle of the two bullpens in this game. Well, we said Bellotti known for that a lot of sliders, but he's thrown some that are back up. So if he's sharp, he'll just kept, keep passing the baton onto each bullpen arm for the rest of the way. Dansby Swanson fouls one off the end of the bat, strike one. Swanson popped out his first time, two for 13 in this series. Bellotti pitched the first game and uh, just wasn't sharp at that slider you're talking about. Much better his second time. No. One, two, three. Yeah, and a lot of these guys, you know, they're going to have some nerves, right? First postseason, they're trying to feel and get their heartbeat working and the pitches where they want to. Off balance, fly to center. Marsh. One guard in the fourth. Down to Ken Rosenthal, who's got Brian Snicker. Thanks, Joe. Brian. Why did Charlie Morton need to come out of this game? Well, he, you know, I talked to him down there. We did X-rays. There wasn't anything structural, and he wanted to try it. And I just, I just put the eye test to it, and I didn't like the way the warm-up was going. I just, you know, and you know, if you try it, and we get down more, then I wish they have got him out of there. But I don't think it was something, that was, you know, was going to get better as the the afternoon went. I know most of your better relievers are rested. But what does your offense need to do to turn this game around? Yeah, we just got to start stringing some things together. I mean, just, um, you know, you get to these points, some guy, guys try too hard, and we just got to relax and do what we're capable of doing. Brian, thank you. Back to you, Joe. All right, guys, here's Matt Olson sending one in the air down the line, deep to right. That one is gone. Olson's second home run of the series. And for the Braves, the second today, it's a 4 2 game. Or, yes, yeah, string it together or. Hit the ball out of the park. Brian Snicker will take either of those things. Four to two in the fourth. Well, in these type of games in the postseason, right, you you wouldn't figure that teams are going to the bullpen as quick as they have. But the, the problem with a bullpen game, everybody's got to be on. It just takes one guy not to be on to get the other team back in it and or to add on. In the case of the Phillies, if the bullpen for the Braves is not locked in. Garcia and Olsen both with home runs and now Travis Starno. Strike one. That's that slider. And that's how it was looking in his first appearance. Yeah. He, he got to finish at the end. He's not finishing at the end. And when it backs up over the middle, if it backs up inside, those are the ones pitchers wish they knew how to throw because hitters can't hit. They're anticipating the break. Here's the 0 1. That's the one that backs up yeah. inside. And, uh, and, and, and I can see when he's nasty what that pitch does. It turns the corner, but right now it's almost he's just not getting out over his front side and finishing where you turn it out in front instead of trying to throw it from behind you. And when that's your pitch, that's the one you lean on and you don't have fuel for it. Well, I'll, get, I'll give him credit for throwing the call. Yeah, still <laughs> going to it. Oh. 
And Bilotti throws that pitch more than half the time. Trying to find it here in the fourth. Home of the one two to Darno. Made a good one. Two gone. And we look back at Matt Olson's homer. Yeah, that's just the sweet spot for Olson. He loves inner half. He has trouble with fastballs away. They were trying to go away. And this was a no doubt. Let's put a hush over this place. Braves back to within two. There's Austin Riley. Riley during the regular season hit 38 home runs. He knocked in 107 with his fly out his first time. He's six for his last 50. Yeah, that's tough for an offense who's he's the horse, right? I mean, MVP votes. And uh, front side just out of his mechanics a little bit. And, and when you're when you're going through a stretch like this, it always seems like it's 0 2 1 2. <laughs> Yeah. You know when a pitcher's hot it's always 0 2 1 2 and when he's struggling it's usually the other way and, and you got to get yourself to connect one time just to re it only takes one swing one rocket off the bat to reconnect. And those struggles it is 0 2 very quickly. Bilotti fires Riley's down swinging. Braves get one back their second home run of the day and it's 4 to 2. In the middle of the fourth. <laughs> Phillies in front, two games to one. This best of five as Bryson Stott leads off the fourth. Swings and misses at Colin McHugh's first one. Stott struck out his first time. That's up of the bullpens at this point. Short starts from both guys. McHugh came on last inning for Charlie Morton. He's gone as many as three innings in a game this year, thrown as many as 39 pitches. Thirty five year old in his 10th year. Home with an 0 2. Fouled off. One inning at a time. I'm sure that's what uh, Rob Thompson's going to approach. Each guy that pitch a clean inning would be a perfect scenario for him for Brian Snicker. He's going to lean on McHugh maybe this inning and one more maybe if they stay within two. But that's the key staying within two. Until the offense can do more for the Braves. Oh. One and two. Phillies took the first game of this series 7-6. Remember they raced out to an early lead in that game. It was all Braves in game two, three nothing. All Phillies last night, 9-1. About 19 times during the regular season. And now facing off for the trip to the league championship at stake. Two two. Full count. Well, there's no doubt they've had the better at bats, right? Offensively, they've had some clutch, timely hitting out of the nine spot in some pretty incredible ways. They've drawn a lot of pitches from the Braves pitchers, so their game plan has been a pretty good one attacking this Braves staff. Stop serves one into left center field and drops it in for a leadoff hit. Rice and Stott's impressive emergence continues with the leadoff single here in the fourth. The postseason continues this afternoon over on TBS with a pair of game threes in the American League. The Astros try to close out the Mariners. First postseason game in Seattle since 2001. And then the Yankees and the Guardians as that series shifts to Cleveland. We'll be back on FS1 for game four between the Dodgers and the Padres. Pitching matchup tonight, Tyler Anderson, who is an all-star. Joe Musgrove was as well. And the hometown guy has a chance to pitch the Padres into the championship series. Gene Segura shows ball. bunt and takes a ball. The 
came into the game talking about the bottom of the lineup for the Braves needing to get going. They got a home run from Orlando Arcia in the bottom of the order today, but the Phillies bottom of the order piling on today. The home run from Marsh. Segura was aboard for that homer after his hit. Veterans up again here, and he takes a strike. One one. Well, you asked me early, what's the definition or the way that you could pitch an elimination game? Yeah. One of the one of the keys was get the leadoff hitter out. That's four for four now for the Phillies. They've had four innings, four leadoff hitters on. Of course, yes, the last inning was a leadoff home run that rounded the bases, so technically inside the park home run. But they've created the pressure on the Braves, and it's paying off. Stressful enough already. Right for oh, a pitcher yeah. in a game like this, and then you get that traffic around you. You know, I, I've always used the example like try to go pitch in Colorado. It's hard to get three outs in Colorado. It's a tough place to pitch. Well, that's what the postseason environment is. <laughs> it really is. It's tough to get three outs because attention to detail, hyper focus, fan standing, and the teams that do it the best are the ones that move on. The hitters are saying, why can't the postseason be like Coors Field for us, too? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's the opposite. But all the runs, you know, we thought home runs, and, and it hadn't really paid until the last couple of games. All the runs today come in via the home run, but that one big blow, the three-run homer yesterday and three-run homer today has been the difference. Yeah, there were four home runs combined over the first three games. There have been four home runs in this game already. You're off the end of the bat, short right field. It's Arcia. 4 2 game, and the guy with the biggest swing of the day, Brandon Marsh, comes to the plate in time for a play resume sponsored by Indeed. Now, Marsh's three run home run, the key swing for the Phillies in this game. Supporting Noah Syndergaard, who went the first three innings, will give up just the Arcia homer. Brandon Marsh grew up to become a second round draft pick of the Angels. His climb was slowed by injuries. Became a top prospect though and made it to the majors last year. You go back years before though, and Brandon was always one of the smaller kids growing up in Buford, Georgia. He was athletic, he was scrappy, but he never imagined he'd be a pro athlete. And to right center field, Acuna to the gap. Wow, it drops between them. Marsh heads for second. He's there. Not Ben Ronald Acuna's finest day in right. Second and third for the Phillies. Got to be ready on every play. And this ball had tweener written all over it, but he didn't look like he picked it up and then gave up at the last second in case... There was a collision, so to your point, been a rough outfield play so far, and it has got a chance again for the Phillies to spread some distance offensively. Every time the Braves have answered with a run, the Phillies come right back. And now they're going to walk. They've walked Schwarber to pitch the bases loaded here with Hoskins. Well, they did this yesterday. They took the... Open base, put Schwarber on, took their chances with Hoskins, who pummeled the first pitch that he saw for a three run home run. Longest tenured Phillies position player. Longtime teammate Zach Eflin says this guy has Philly written all over him. Base is loaded. Hoskins takes a strike. All right, interesting decision here by Colin McHugh. Obviously, he feels more comfortable out of the windup, but with the bases loaded and they're hoping to turn two, it does give the runners a little bit more of a head start, especially Schwarber at first. But he feels like he can make his best pitches out of the windup, and we'll see because he can give up the ground ball double play. Oh. One on one. Base is loaded for the Phils. It's tight here in game four. Trying to crack it open. Two and one on Hoskins.
two grand slams in his six years in the majors including one of them this year. On a two one Hoskins reaches out pops it up short right field Acuna with another try. He's got this one. And Hoskins is out number two. It brings up JT Real Muto, whose last time up turned it into the 17th inside the park home run in postseason history and the first one ever by a catcher. One thousand seven hundred twenty seven postseason games. Yeah, the first inside the Parker for a catcher. First one for anybody since Rafael Devers in the division series five years ago at Fenway. And now Rio Muto against Colin McHugh with the bases loaded. Here in the fourth inning. Rio Muto takes ball one. Been a lot of talk about Gene Segura finally getting to the postseason after 11 years and 1,300 games. Well, for JT Real Muto, nine years, more than a thousand games. His first time in the playoffs. He's taken full advantage. The Phillies MVP this year. JT Real Muto fouls it off and it's one and two. Well, if Colin McHugh makes a pitch on the outer half, sweeping away, that is where JT strikeouts come from. If he leaves it over the plate, he can go the other way. He's really good at going the other way with power, but he has to sweep this pitch off the break, off the plate, if you're thinking along lines of Darno. Stays alive. Maria Muto off to a slow start this year. He's hitting 230 in mid June. Then he stopped tinkering. He said, Enough. I'm going to go back to what I've always done. Stop changing the height of his leg kick. Settled in and took off. Hit above 300 the rest of the way. Key at bat. Here in the fourth inning of game four, he chases and McHugh went to exactly what you were hoping he would. A breaking pitch down and away. And the Phillies leave the bases loaded. It stays 4-2. 4-2, Phillies in front. Five innings away from a trip to the championship series. And this bullpen game for both sides continues. Brad Hand comes on to face Michael Harris. Spins one away, ball one. This is Hand's third game of the division series. He had missed about the last month with some elbow tenderness, but he comes back and has looked very effective. Got that late breaking slider that he goes to a lot. Through it for the first two, one ball, one struck. And the thing you got to tell yourself: if you're left-handed, it starts at me. That's probably one I want to hit. If it starts down the middle, you got to lead to go, let it go. But that's hard. To, that's hard to make those decisions in under a second. Three straight breakers, one ball, two strikes. We talked about it after the first inning, John. A huge moment for. Morton to get out of that. A huge moment for McHugh to get out of the bases loaded situation in the fourth. The Braves' largest comeback win this year is from down three. And they keep the deficit two by getting out of that. Ah, and quickly makes work or makes quick work of Harris for strikeouts open this fifth. In the between innings, here's a conversation with Harris and Acuna. Eric Young is over there talking with those guys after that ball fell in between them. That's Eddie Rosario as well, so all three outfielders.
Contreras. All kinds of breaking stuff. You know it's a good pitch when you throw it nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> it's just got late, late break. It's like I don't need to set this thing up. First fastball that he's thrown, and he's ahead on two. Contreras bounced out his first stop, getting his first start since the first game of the series here today. All star DH for the Braves on an 0 2 from Brad Hand. Zach Eflin, who lately has seen a lot of time in the ninth inning. Part of the plan to get it there today. Back to back K's for hand. And four in a row of Braves hitters. Enjoy the thrill of the postseason with the MLB app. Get daily lineups, live pitch by pitch coverage, and more on our free app with over 150,000 reviews. Download the free MLB app today. Here's Orlando Arcio who launched a home run his first time. Unless I've done something wrong, the Braves have had no base runners. Yeah, you're right. Just two solo shots. Two solo shots. They've created no stress for the pitchers on the Phillies. That's another bullet from Arcia, who was two for two. There you go. And Speak it down. into existence, dude. But on the opposite side, that's all the Phillies have done. Yeah. Has created pressure and stress and hits and. There are moments away from breaking this game open have the Phillies so credit the Braves for limiting that damage but up until then solo home runs rarely beat you in the postseason I keep saying that and I know there's going to be a time where there's enough of them that it, that it does beat somebody. You pitched in 41 games in your postseason career and I know that was always on your mind right you yeah give them up just don't have anybody on when you do yeah just try your best to, to make every quality pitch to limit the big innings because they get away from you and then the game gets away from you. Well, there is a runner on here and so Eddie Rosario represents the tying run gets a breaking pitch locks it to center for Marsh and that'll wrap up the top of the fifth halfway home in game four it's 4 2 Phillies. Piece together these bullpen games, choosing when to use your top arms. And for Brian Snicker, he deploys his top left hander and AJ Minter to face Bryce Harper here in the fifth. Second appearance for Minter at a 1 2 3 inning in game two of this series. It's strike one on Harper. Harper's 0 for 2 here in game 4. 6 out of 13, though, in the series with a home run and three doubles. Kyle Wright has headed down to the Braves' bullpen. At the same time, Ranger Suarez went down to the Phillies' bullpen. Everybody available, really, with the exception of yesterday's starters, Strider and Nola. Phillies want to end it right here. Braves obviously. Tomorrow's nothing unless they win today. Harper right there. I think he looked at it. A little tough to see. Pointed at his eyes. A little tough to see. A little bit of those shadows. That that little streak of sunlight between the pitcher and the hitter. That's all it takes some time for a change to not pick up spin, not pick up the baseball like they were earlier in the game. But you saw it's already tough for Harper to face Minter. 1 for 12 against him. Look out. One and two. Yeah, Bryce does not like getting buzzed up and in, and you can't blame him. He was hit in the face last year. He was hit in the thumb, except for a broken thumb midway through this season. How the guy gets hit in the face last year and then comes back to do what he did and win the MVP, it's one of the more impressive things we've seen in a while. Yeah, and you'd almost think that this has to be a slider. After a fastball up. Yeah, praying on that mental side of it. Back 
back in. Check on Kenny. Bryce Harper, as you guys mentioned, hit in the face last year, hit in the thumb this year. Before this series started, I asked hitting coach Kevin Long, why has it taken him a long time to respond here? And Kevin mentioned a couple of things. One, that he had to get reacclimated to pitching after missing two months. Two, he swings so hard, he had to get back into swing shape. And he also mentioned the possibility of a fear factor just getting back into that box. When I asked Bryce about it, he said, nope, that's not it at all. I'm not afraid. Down, swinging on a fastball here. Mensa begins his out in with a strikeout of Harper. Oh, this is just gasoline. I mean, petrol right there. Bryce killing right handers more normal against left handers. 256 against left handers. That was a tough. I don't care what left hander. Those are three pretty good pitches. One away in the fifth for Nick Castellanos. Top of the order due up for the Braves, and so Jose Alvarado is getting ready in the bullpen. The 1 0 pitch. Got the call, 1 1. You can hear it. <laughs> he said you missed it, and he probably did. A big, tall, lanky hitter, ball down below his knees. Okay to miss it on the first pitch to mean to be the first strike, but when you start getting to the second and third strike, that's when the anger goes up a little more. It's one and two. And the 30 year old in his 10th year prior to the wild card round had played in two postseason series and gotten swept both times. He was a rookie with the Tigers and then with the Reds in 2020. A chance to get back to the postseason on a routine basis was one of the reasons that he signed with the Phillies. Loved what they had in place. Signed this five year contract, big money deal. They're looking to follow the worst regular season numbers of his career with a memorable October. On a 1 2 from the hard throwing lefty AJ Minter, Castellanos takes ball two. Hit 34 home runs last year was an all star with the Reds only had 13 homers this year. Part of that was missed most of September with an oblique injury it was just starting to hit before that. With the platform to make up for all that. 2-2. Two -two. Two out. Buckled his knees. Geared up for that fastball, and then that thing breaks off. Postseason continues shortly on TBS. Couple game threes in the American League: the Astros and the Mariners, the Yankees and the Guardians, and then the Dodgers and the Padres on FS1 tonight. Padres are trying to pull off the biggest upset in terms of separation in games during the regular season since 1906. Dodgers were 22 games better than the Padres during the regular season. The largest gap in baseball history for a team to beat an opponent in the postseason was 23 games. The White Sox over the Cubs in the 1906 World Series. Alec Baum takes a ball. Well, you know, the interesting narrative when people found out about the new playoff system, they said, well, you want to catch the Dodgers in a best of five and not a best of seven if you're going to beat them. Because over the course of seven games, I know it's only two more. That's a huge difference against a team that won 111. And I guess the same could be said for the Atlanta Braves. So we've got some hot teams coming in in a best of five that are on the brink of doing exactly that. And I don't know that a lot of people thought 
both could go down and that's what today could provide. I mean a lot of the talk down the stretch John was Jesus anybody want those last two wild card spots like none of these teams seem like they deserve it Phillies were playing around 500 for a lot of the last month same thing with the Padres they both hold off the Brewers to get in and are both one win away from knocking off the top two. Two and one on ball. Well, what might surprise people about the Philadelphia Phillies is they had what third best six run or six inning two runs or less performances out of their starters. I think the Dodgers were first. The San Diego in that mix too. Astros were in there. Yeah. So you know that might go under the radar. They didn't early in the year they didn't win a lot of those games so it's misleading but it's led them to this point. They've got those kind of horses on the top. To provide those six, seven innings, two runs or less. Chopper to third for Riley. AJ Minter with a one, two, three, fifth. The Braves facing elimination down two. Top of the order coming up in the sixth. Acuna, Swanson, and Olsen. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube to keep up with everything baseball. Jose Alvarado has turned into one of the best left-handed relievers in baseball. And a weapon out of this Phillies bullpen that they'll use against the top of the Braves lineup here. He is a weapon, and you know they know that this part of the game, right, sixth inning, maybe doesn't pitch in the sixth inning too often, but the top of the lineup, when he throws strikes, he's top to hit. 100-mile-an-hour bowling balls he's throwing up there. Pitch in games one and three. He's faced six hitters and retired them all. Acuna, Swanson, and Olsen for the Braves. Down 4 2 in the sixth. Then Ronald takes oh. down the middle for strike one. Acuna, who was impressive over the first few games of this series, has struck out both times today and had some questionable moments in the outfield. Braves needing their most electric player to step up here. Their season. On thin ice right now. No balls and two strikes. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. One gone in the sixth. Slider after seeing fastballs in the middle of the plate on the first pitch, he buries them on the next two. Now it's Swanson. No for two today, two for 14 in the series. It almost hit him on the foot. Sell it, Dansby. <laughs> yeah, we got too much, uh, too much TV now, yeah. right? Too many That's angles. Right. To Hard to lie. <laughs> oh. Two and zero. Oh. Well, there's a chance this is the last game Dansby Swanson plays in a Braves uniform. They can't come from behind, and if the Braves and Swanson can't come to terms on a deal as he reaches free agency. If it is, what a run it's been. Seven years, starting as a guy that, you know, in the middle of those losing seasons still was going to be the savior. He's the big trade acquisition. The local guy that showed up and struggled at first. Then settled in, became a foundational piece of this five straight division title run. And more than a foundational piece, he's turned into one of the best players in the league the last couple of years. Takes a strike and it's three and one. 
But he's going to have plenty of suitors in free agency as he should as he's earned and the Braves haven't handed out as many big contracts as they have already. I figure at some point there's not enough to go around for the kind of deal that Dansby Swanson is going to ask for and deserve three and two. Made a tough decision to not give Freddie Freeman what he wanted. Freeman goes to the Dodgers. So Swanson, the longest tenured guy now. And we'll see how much longer that tenure goes. Three two from Jose Alvarado. Back to back strikeouts. 101, two gone. I know. There were a couple on the Phillies that were complaining. This one was top to bottom. A tough, tough call for Swanson. He's going to go back on the iPad and realize this was below the zone. 3 0, top of the zone strike, and then 3 2, below the zone strike. That's a tough one when it's strike three. You're not given really a chance to hit that, that pitch. You called it a bowling ball, and the bowling ball's down there. What are you going to do? Two up and two down and a couple K's from Jose Alvarado. Now Matt Olson has been the Braves best hitter in this series. Bounces one up the middle. Bryson Stott running throw. One, two, three, six. MLBShop.com. Authentic on-field caps, hoodies, Tees and more. Get all your postseason gear and wear with the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. The defending champ on the ropes here. Braves down 4 2, down in the series 2 1. Man, Stu Sherwalker is all over the place. Not making any friends with the hitters, is he? No, last last inning and a half. Been pretty good strike zone, so the last inning and a half is. It's been expanded in areas you just don't want it to expand. I mean, you can't hit that pitch. You can't hit the pitch previous. Castellanos couldn't have hit that other pitch. But strike one's different than strike three, as I mentioned. Going two on stop. Strike three, you got no chance, right? Can't, you can't get back. If they call strike three, is a ball. There's nothing you can do about it. Do you feel like you just took this at bat from me? Yeah. Well, it was three and oh, the previous at bat, to be fair. And you usually don't get the close pitches when you've gone three and oh. Yeah, these guys they're facing here tough enough to face these dudes Alvarado for the Phillies Minters back out there for the Braves something that he did just four times during the regular season that is go more than an inning and he looks perfectly fine striking out Stout on three pitches now well, quick word from Capital One Capital One is the official bank and credit card partner of Major League Baseball what's in your wallet Braves bullpen trying to keep him within striking distance as Gene Segura comes up. Got just two innings from Charlie Morton today. The Q came on, went two. This is Minter's second inning of work. And yeah, it's dueling bullpen games here, but for the Braves, it's back to back pen games. Strider went just a couple innings yesterday. One ball, one strike. The Phillies got the great start from Nola. And Easy to look back, second guess the decision to go Strider game three, Morton game four. You look back on it now, though, and it's kind of the same thing. Short start. And a bullpen used heavily. Two on one. Well, the bottom line is in, in this series, you throw out the regular season, the Phillies have been the better team. And they've done all the things you have to do to get themselves to this spot. Two games to one. They're in the driver's seat. And that's what you have to do in postseason baseball. They did all they had to do against the St. Louis Cardinals. 
Base hit center field, Gene Segura. And when you do that, you know, your chances of winning go way up, especially in the best of five. Well, the 87 win Phillies can ask the 88 win Braves of 2021 about that. They weren't the best team during the regular season, but they got to the postseason. They got some hot pitchers. They got some hitters you never would have guessed would turn into heroes. So Eddie Rosario from last year meet Brandon Marsh from this year. The nine hitter is two for two in this game with a three run home run. Yesterday meet Bryson Stott. Getting key components at the right time, especially in these short series. The 87 win Phillies on the verge of taking down the 101 win Braves. It's amazing, too, because you know, when you're out on the mound and you get all that information, I used to always make sure what's the one pitch that the other guy can do damage on. And unfortunately for the Braves, the only pitch those two guys could have done damage on were the two pitches they got, and they didn't miss it because the fastball would have been very hard statistically to see those guys turn around those fastballs, and that's all it takes. You, you, you seize the moment, and both these guys did. Stotts, incredible at bat, got his slider, and right here, Marsh got the two strikes. Got his breaking ball and didn't miss it. You know, the other thing comparing last year's Braves to this year's Phillies, John, is that the Braves' bullpen shut things down in the postseason last year. It was not a great bullpen for a lot of the regular season. They found it in the postseason. And the Phillies' bullpen, not great for a lot of the regular season, has rounded into shape in this postseason. Runner takes off. Throw from Darno is not in time. Stolen base for Gene Segura. Now that's on one more time. That's on Minter. I mean, he's left-handed and he didn't vary any of his times. Segura got the timing he needed, and they do study the pitchers just like they study the hitters and the moves. So he got the jump and he stole the base. So some insurance and scoring position. Minter ahead of Marsh one and two. Here comes Marsh. Take strike three right down the middle. Two gone. Well, safe to say this game will have the most combined strikeouts so far in the series. Game one had 21 between the two teams, and uh, right now we're at 19. So it has been a uh, strikeout kind of day. Mm -hmm. Kyle Schwarber comes to the plate. Yeah, a quick word from DraftKings. This postseason, bet $5, win 200 in free bets if your team wins. Download the app and get in on the action. There's a good chance this is Mincer's last hitter with the righty Hoskins after Schwarber. Rysel Iglesias has been nails out of that brave spend since they got him from the Angels. Bunch of former Angels making impacts in this series for both these teams. Well, had you told the Phillies that Kyle Schwarber would go one for 19 in the postseason, you probably wouldn't love your chances to be looking at advancing twice, but that's the case here. One hit was a single yesterday. He's got Segura at second. Two gone in the sixth. And an 0-1 from Minter. Schwarber swings and misses, and it's 0-2. That's what's amazing about the postseason. You just never know who's going to step up and what it's going to take. And 
for the Phillies. They've had plenty of help. It hasn't just landed on one guy. They've spread the wealth around and the timing has been perfect in their offense versus the Braves offense has really only been kind of three guys. And the rest has been pretty dormant. Run champ in the regular season, 46, only second to Aaron Judge across baseball. 0 2 for Minter. I mean, that's a perfect exa example. You mentioned Aaron Judge. You right. know, monster year, going to win the MVP in his first eight at bats. He's got seven strikeouts. So, five days off for them, too. I mean, you just know the, the rhythm and the, and the timing and everything about baseball, which makes it so unique. There are certain things you can depend on. Starting pitching, going seven innings, good formula. Hitting and rhythm, timing, getting hot at the right time, good formula. Oh. Judge got booed yesterday. He got booed. 62 home runs and MVP. Yankees wouldn't be there without Aaron Judge and two bad games. What have you done for me lately? They ask. Mitchell trying to strand the man at second. His 2 2 to Kyle Schwarber. There'll be another. Check in with Ken Rosenthal. Guys, there'll be a lot of talk about the layoffs if the Dodgers and Braves both go down, but really it's not much longer than last year. Last year, four days between the end of the season and the start of the National League Division Series, three days between the end of the season and the start of the American League Division Series. Yeah, I'd be interested to see through the years, you know, as we gather more evidence what that five day layoff does mean for teams. In the first year of this setup, that is a dead ball one way or another, and they're going to say that it hit Schwarber. There's some question, did it hit the bat? Did it hit Schwarber? And he said it at first with a hit by pitch. Yeah. Hit his hand. Yep. No Schwarber hit list today, but he's been on three times. A walk, an intentional walk, and now he's hit by a pitch. We're going to challenge it. You do get two challenges in the postseason. And if you're right, you keep it. I don't know if they're going to be right on this one. No. You do know, and the answer is no. Yeah. The answer is no. Yeah. Take a listen. The yeah, umpire did say foul ball. Huh. So Schwarber just went down there on his own. Well, then, if that's the case, why are the Braves challenging? Because he changed his mind. The umpire changed his mind. Okay. Maybe it may, that could have been that could have been Darno. We don't know for sure. I mean, to be fair, that could have been Darno saying foul ball. There's some voice recognition software up here. We'll get on it. Come on, Joe Carp, you got that stuff? <laughs> The call stands and uh, Joe Carp, our award winning audio man, is in fact the voice recognition software himself. He confirms that it was the umpire that said foul ball, but then his mind was changed. That's a hit by pitch, and that's going to be the end of AJ Minter's day. So a two gone here in the sixth inning. Rysel Iglesias will come on to face Reese Hoskins. Go to Phillies games and sporting events whenever he wants to. The recently retired Jay Wright, one of the greats, two national championships at Villanova, retired after his 21st year 
And enjoy it. Game four of this series. As Phillies have a 4 2 lead, they've got runners at first and second. Bryce Iglesias on to face Reese Hoskins. Well, you know who's not enjoying things? Hitters trying to hit the changeup of Iglesias since he's gotten to Atlanta. It is a swing and miss pitch. It is a hard pitch to hit to the tune of 146. So he has been on point since coming to Atlanta. Braves really have two closers down there. And they pair Iglesias with Jansen. Iglesias has gone 26 consecutive outings without giving up an earned run. And the Jansen hoping for a chance of his own. Close game two. Braves spent a lot of this series trailing. Go two. Ball oh, time. Ball one. The only thing this is doing, if if the Phillies don't score a run, I I believe Alvarado staying in the game, hmm. and that's a long that's a long time for a reliever like him to sit between innings. We'll see what Rob Thompson does. Haven't really seen anybody throw in the bullpen, so if you're going to get this length of delay, you want to get rewarded with a run. Hoskins fights one off, short right, it's down. Segura comes home. Acuna can't find the ball. Now he does. Now it's 5 2. Reese Hoskins drives home Gene Segura. Well, they got rewarded with a run. It's been a delay, and it's the way the Phillies have scored runs all series. Either home runs or putting it in play in the right spot, not hitting liners all the time, and finding. That little hole in the defense if this were football. Diving into the end zone. It is for football. 5 2 Phillies in front here in the sixth. And Hoskins knocks in another run. Real Muto trying to crack it open, and the Phillies have had some chances throughout this game, John, to make this lopsided, yes. but have left a bunch of guys out there. Five to two feels like a six run lead when it's been two runs for most of the last three innings. There's that change up. Muto with an inside the park home run today. Smothers it. Schwarber's down there at third. AJ Minter had Kyle Schwarber down 0 2. Went to 2 and 2. Then he hit him. Iglesias had Hoskins 0 2. Well, Hoskins had the base hit. Drive in some insurance for Philadelphia. On 1 1, Real Muto swings and misses. Another good change up. 1 and 2. Intended. This ball is just kind of cued down, and you never know when you make contact. I've never seen a strikeout drive in a run, and plays like this have been going the Phillies' way. You got to give them credit. They've done all the little things. A great effort by Riley and a good scoop, but those two runs right there might be the backbreaker on how game one started in the postseason and how game four might just end it. For the Atlanta Braves. Well, they're starting to feel it in South Philly. The Phillies are starting to sense it. 6 2 in the sixth inning of game four, and they've got Harper up there. Mm -hmm. 
Broken bat, base hit the other way. Here comes another. 7-2 Phillies. They're living a charmed life. could add up the last three exit velocities and probably not get to the one single one that was hit for a home run by Marsh but again little things just doing everything to gain that momentum and feast off of the kind of innings we talked about two six run innings in this postseason now they've had two three run innings in this game pressure it put on the Braves bullpen he said once they got four runs they were going to almost have to be perfect the rest of the game ball one on Castellanos exit velocities on those three hits and if you're new to exit velocity 95 miles per hour is considered hard hit your average hitter is about 89 90 the three hits there 63 30 and 76 16 runs for the Phillies over the last game plus. Well, that'll officially take out Alvarado, and they won't need him to wait any longer to pitch now in a five run lead. So the Phillies are going to get that bullpen humming to bring somebody else in. Two and one on Castellanos. Zach Eflin, we saw Mormon earlier. Jim loose again. Never didn't give them more than an inning. They've got three innings left to cover. Three innings between the Phillies and the league championship series. Before last year, Phillies hadn't had a winning season in a decade. Before this year, they hadn't been to the postseason in 11 years. Snap that. Got in as the sixth seed. Upset the Cardinals in St. Louis. And I'll try to upset the defending champs in front of their home crowd. Count goes full on Castellanos. Runners who get a head start. straight two out base runners and now it's Alec Bohm who had an RBI hit his first at bat of this series and then had an 0 for 10 stretch before singling and scoring in the second today you don't see too many playoff games where a team bats around well, this is the ninth batter, and yesterday they got to 10, I believe. So, shows what, when they get the train moving, what they've been able to do offensively. It's part of the reason to fear this Phillies team all along. And the ability to do this, they can bang with anybody. Ball one on ball. And early part of the season, they were doing that, and they were getting some good starting pitching. But a lot of what they built with those two things undermined by bad defense and a bad bullpen. The defense isn't great. I mean, the last couple of nights has not looked good. The bullpen's better. 
But those two components good enough at this point to make this a scary, scary team when you consider the starters and the offense. Yes, absolutely. And the reason this game was so important for the Phillies, besides the obvious moving on, it allows them to reboot and set up their rotation in the order that they want whoever they face next. Because the last thing you'd want to do is go through game five and then lose a lot of that leverage moving forward so you could sense that Rob Thompson if given the opportunity was going to put the throttle down and use every high leverage guy he could to secure that there is no game five on a two on Alec Baum pulls his hands in but it's caught by Swanson the Phillies with another big frame. They score three times in the sixth. To the late innings we go in game four. A game that started with Charlie Morton on the mound. He was gone after two. And the smiles and the moments have poured out. For out in the sixth. Hoskins and Rio Muto both knock in runs. Bryce Harper did as well. Jose Alvarado here, who only threw ten pitches in his first inning of work, is back out there, even though the Phillies now have a five-run lead, and he sat for 32 minutes. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by this. Obviously, it's going to, you know, we'll see what happens, but normally you don't have a reliever sit that long and come back, but he was so dynamic, maybe they're trying to run it out there again, but that's a long time for any pitcher to be sitting to go back out there who's not used to doing that. Would love if he could get him part of the seventh inning. Then you've got Eflin, you've got Sir Anthony Dominguez available, you've got Ranger Suarez who they've sent down there to be an option, and Zach Wheeler still an option to cover the final nine outs of this game. Four, five, and six for the Braves in the seventh. Travis Darno is 0 for 2. Goes after the first one, lifts it to center field. Marsh is going back, he's at the wall, it's gone! Lead off home run, Travis Darno. The first pitch that Jose Alvarado's thrown in 32 minutes is hit out. And it's a 7-3 game on Darno's second home run of this series. Well, didn't waste any time finding out if the theory was going to happen. And Darno goes to the deepest part of the park. And I mean, Marsh. Whew gives it an unbelievable effort. Now it's Riley. <laughs> well, the Braves today have three home runs, but they're all solo home runs. And you've talked about how they've yeah. not put any pressure on. They only have one other base runner. The rest of the day, no walks, one single. Strike two. Yeah, it's been a strikeout or a home run for the most part. Even the plays that were made out weren't like tough on the defense. They're pretty neutral and easy. Grounded to first, picked by Hoskins. Alvarado beats Riley to the bag. And the Phillies are holding their breath, watching him tiptoe over there awkwardly. He says he's good, and they all exhale. Second fielder, Michael Hendricks, the second. Tricky hop there. It looked like it might have caught the end of the grass. Key there is for first baseman to get the ball to the pitcher as soon as possible so that he can catch it first and concentrate on the bag second. You a fan of the bigger bases coming next year? Can't wait. Yeah. I'm a fan of all the things that are happening next year. <laughs> so many great, so many great changes. None of them bigger than the pitch clock that's coming next year that's going to change the way the game feels. Those games attend to. Feel like not a lot is going on and take all the great things about baseball concentrate them into a tighter more crisp package one ball no strikes on Michael Harris one ball one strike now Harris who's had such a great rookie year it's going to be right there with Spencer Strider for rookie of the year 
has run out of steam here. He's one for 13 in the postseason. He's two for 26 back to the last week of the regular season. Well, it's a game of adjustments, and when you come out like he did in the first year, it'll take a while for pitchers. They will find a weakness, and it's up to him and even for Strider when on the other side of the ball to be able to make adjustments in the league and how the teams are attacking him. So time will tell for these young players who are going to be a big part of the organization and moving forward. Punches one to short. Stop. Hoskins. A tip of the cap from Hoskins to the rookie shortstop. Stop. Two gone in the seventh. The Braves are going to want to take a look at this one. Look at the short hop and when it gets in the glove versus when he touches the bag. I think that's close enough to be able to take a look. It's close. And the tie usually. It'll be interesting to see the angles and where that actually happens when the foot's down. I didn't think he had a chance when the ball was hit. What an incredible play by Stop wow. and a good scoop by Hoskins. Sure is close, right? Well, whatever they uh, just showed on the video board here in Philadelphia sounded like it was pretty conclusive, although they are seeing oh, yeah. Phillies colored goggles. Yeah. <laughs> Crew Chief Bill and Miller. Review, the call in the field is confirmed. Wow. The runner is out. Atlanta has lost their second challenge. They weren't watching it with any goggles. They're just watching it on a massive screen, and they knew. I mean, again, an incredible play. I, I didn't think against the speedy Harris. Once it got by, boom. So that is going to do it for Jose Alvarado. He gives up the leadoff home run, but mostly well. And look at this, soaking it in. Jose Alvarado faces. Six hitters, retires five of them. Hands it off to Zach Afron with two gone in the seventh inning, and the Phillies up 7 3. Zach Afron, the longtime starting pitcher, working out of the bullpen down the stretch. Strike one on William Contreras. He's out for a lot of the season with ongoing knee problems, aggravated an issue that's bothered him for a lot of his career. And they didn't figure they had time to build him up coming back. Came back midway through September. So let's see what it looks like out of the pen. And they've liked what they've seen. There have been some blemishes here in the postseason. All in all, though, encouraged with what he's given them. Help him solidify what remains probably the biggest question mark. Working quickly. One ball, two strikes. And he throws a heavy sinker. He's gone back to what he feels comfortable instead of the four seam pitch up that was giving him trouble as a starter and slow heartbeat. He had that slow heartbeat in St. Louis, got it done. Oh. Full count. Contreras sold for two today. Arsu, who's on deck, is two for two. He's got half of the team's hits. Got him. Seventh inning stretch in Philadelphia. The Phils are six outs from the championship series.
game four, the Phillies enjoying a 7-3 lead. Three in the second, one in the third, three in the sixth. Ken Rosenthal down in the field. How's your hearing? How are your ears doing? My hearing is fine, though, but you know how on your phone sometimes you get an alert when there's bad weather in the area, maybe a flash flood warning? Well, twice in the last two days, I've received notifications on my phone about how loud it is here, warning me that it could be reaching dangerous levels. Now, I listen to loud music. I go to concerts all the time, but that is the first. I've never received those kinds of warnings. You big concert guy, huh? Are you a rocker, Kenny? I would say that, yes. Nice. Who knew? Here's Dylan Lee. Bryson Stott swings and misses. I mean, it really has been. And we knew that it would be a good atmosphere. I don't know about for you, John, but for me, it's exceeded even my very high expectations of what it would feel like in here. Well, I've been part of this before, so I knew exactly what yeah. it was going to be like. Uh, the gap of time gets oh. that. Each year that goes by, there's amped up more and more that when it finally gets here, which it did for the Phillies fans, they've been waiting for a while. And it's not like they've never won before. It's just been a while. And... They're showing out. It's like almost a dream weekend for them, you know. If they win this game, and then the football wins their game tomorrow night. I don't know what they're. I don't know what the work life's going to be. Start Monday for a lot of businesses in this city. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Bottom part of the order for the Phillies here. Stocks one for three. Now the two-one pitch from Lee. It's one on the ground to first for Matt Olson. 3 1 put out, one gone in the seventh. Tomorrow, Tom Brady leads the Bucks into the Steel City to take on the Steelers. Or the Jets visit Lambeau to take on Rodgers and the Packers. You can check the local listings for the game in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. We had uh, Nick Sirianni, the head coach of the Eagles, here yesterday. Jeffrey Lurie, the owner of the Eagles, in attendance today. You talking about yesterday how you've been a part of some sports towns that have kind of rallied around each other. Yeah. It's a special thing to be a part of, I would think. Yeah, it is. And, you know, you take a lot of pride in the other team's success because you all feel like the more the merrier, right, in your city, the more that you can accomplish together. And, and Philly's got a chance to do something special football basketball and now baseball ball one on Gene Segura Joel Embiid is here today I hope there's not many people sitting behind him no yeah that wouldn't be a good seat that'd be just about as good of a seat as sitting behind the Philly fanatic like we saw yesterday Segura's got a couple more hits in this game He's reached base in all six games in his trip, first trip to the postseason. That guy's never having a bad time. Even with some of the losing through the years, he's remained the same. Never change. Never change, Mr. Fanatic. Segura lofts to right center. His third hit of the afternoon. It'll go for extra bases. Double for Gene Segura. It's just one of the classic kind of strong, quick to the ball, not a lot of movement. Just watch how quick. And he does gap to gap. He can hit for power if you throw him the right pitch, but he's more apt to single and double you to death than beat you with the long ball. and. I don't know many games that Segura plays where a his jersey won't be dirty. <laughs> He's showing you right there. See all this dirt. Is there a B to your AB situation? B. He's gonna he's gonna find a way to do something unorthodox. Slide to center. Here's Harris to get Marsh. You know the other thing with Gene Segura, and this is not something that's been said much about him throughout his career. Really, for the first time, people are talking about him being a leader. And he says, as he's seen the postseason chance come into focus, his first trip, we've talked many times about that. He's taken guys like Bryson Stott, Edmundo Sosa, the guys he calls his youngsters, 
under his wing, seeing that as a way to help his own cause. Yeah, look, it might be a little bit selfish, but I know the best way for us to get to the postseason, for me to get that chance, is for everybody to feel comfortable, for me to do my part to bring these young guys along. Bryson and Stott and those guys have really benefited from that. They enjoyed having Segura as another guy that they can go to. Strike on Schwarber. Easy segue to Schwarber because he's somebody that the Phillies acquired for his power, yes, but also for his leadership. And then everybody raves about him. They, they have every step in Schwarber's career from the Cubs to the Nationals to the Red Sox last year, where he was there for only a couple months but became one of their key leaders just in that short time. The ball's in two strikes. The guy that Reese Hoskins calls the voice and the heartbeat of this Phillies team. The homers, the leadership, the experience. His 41st postseason game today. Yeah, uh, sailor's mouth there. They'll forgive him. They'll forgive him everything he's doing for him. 7 3 game. Repeat. The repeat champs over the last half century. Last team to do it in the National League, the Big Red Machine, 75 and 76. The Yankees have done it a couple times in this span 77 78. Yankees did it. Blue Jays did it 92 and 93 at the Phillies' expense. And the last team to do it, the Yankees, three straight, 98 to 2,000. Zach Eflin, strike one to Orlando Arcia. Arcia today is two for two. Rest of the Braves, two for 23. Quickly 0-2. And, and on the flip side, this has been a total dominant performance by the Phillies. All nine guys have reached base safely. Seven of the nine have gotten hits, and six of the nine have scored. That's getting it done. One through nine. One, two, three pitches and down. One away in the eighth. Here's Rosario. Now for the Phillies, the guys that have been around the longest, all putting their stamps on this. Ed Hoskins with a home run yesterday. Aaron Nola's been awesome in his two starts. Winning pitcher in that party last night. And then Zach Eflin, who saved the clinching game to get him into the postseason and then saved the clinching game to win the wild card round. He's somebody that's had a long career in Philadelphia. Not barely into the game in left field, replacing Kyle Schwarber, even the defense. Eflin's in his seventh year, so he's the second longest tenured Philly behind Nola. Former first round pick of the Padres. Traded to the Dodgers for a short time, and then flipped to the Phillies. Really the first significant deal the Phillies did from that previous great era moving forward was trading Jimmy Rollins. And Zach Eflin was part of the return in that trade. Made his debut in 2016, slowed by knee issues and back issues. When he's been healthy, he's been great. Getting healthy again for the stretch run here and getting used in a different role. He'd tell you, though, whatever role they need me in, if I get to be a part of it, I'm game. Two and two on Eddie Rosario. Well, he throws strikes. He may pitch to a little bit of contact, but that contact could be on the ground. His 2 2 pitch. Slap foul. Sex says he used to early on in his career be too nice on the mound. And now he tries to think of it as the other guy's trying to steal food off my family's table. Zach became a dad last year. Said it's okay to be a nice guy off of the field, but on the mound, they try to exploit that. 
Back-to-back K's from the newly mean guy, Zach Eflin. Two gone in the eighth. Sinker under the barrel of the bat. Still works. He's back to doing what he feels comfortable and what he feels is best. Not what a computer reading or spin rate or any of that stuff used to tell him when he was a starter. Ball on Acuna. Three K's for Acuna today. He was so eager to get his chance to be part of a long run for the Braves after he watched last year's championship run from the sideline. Jansen getting ready. Got the call, two and one. There no save situation in sight. They're going to use their closer to try and keep it as close as they can here. Look at the top of the lineup here. A two-one pitch. Big old bouncer to Gene Segura. Waits behind second. And throws Acuna out. One, two, three, eighth inning for Zach Eflin to the bottom of the eighth. Well, the Phillies cruised in their first home game in 11 years in the postseason. 9-1 last night. Fairly comfortable here, too, at 7-3 to the bottom of the eighth. And with no save situation to be found, Braves use their close to Kenley Jansen. As Hoskins leads off. The Braves in the ninth inning. They'll have Swanson, Olsen, and Darno coming up. They're under their last three outs. 101 win season and a fifth consecutive division title. And you wonder, John, as the Mets bow out in the wild card round and the Braves look at potentially defeat here, how much the chase and the battle and the bout between those two teams throughout the year drained them. And you look back to last year, Giants and Dodgers had a similar race. Dodgers knocked the Giants out in five games. Their race went right into the division series. And the Dodgers have talked how they feel like they kind of ran out of steam because of that race once they got to the championship series. You wonder how much of a toll that 162-game chase, because the Braves are playing from behind the whole way, took out of them. Yeah, I, I think there's two arguments there to say it's a it's a good question. But I just know the way that the Braves starting rotation was going. I don't know that they would have been. I think they would have been out of gas had they not gotten the five day rest. So something's got to suffer in the five day rest and might have been offensively for the Braves. I think you could make that argument, but time will tell. I, I just think the way the new playoff system is over time, it's going to be a rarity more than commonplace that the two best teams in each league don't advance to a chance to go to the World Series just the way it's set up. You got to give these teams all kinds of credit. Philadelphia, San Diego so far. It looks like Philadelphia's got a chance to put a leg up and punch their ticket. O2 from Kenley Jansen. You know, for the Braves, a lot of people thought that this team was better than last year's team and what they would point to was the depth in the starting rotation, but they get the six scoreless innings in game two from Kyle Wright and the other three games Freed, Strider and Morton combined to give up 14 runs in eight and two thirds. Yeah. No, that in a, an offense that really went cold. But here's the amazing thing about Philadelphia. They've only had stress. Really with two outs in the ninth inning after the three run homer of Olsen. That's the only one run game they've been part of. Yeah. You know they got beat three to nothing but in their wins it looks like there's not going to be much stress going into finishing those games off. There's a lot to be said about that too. Especially when the still relative question is the bullpen. Especially right. David Robertson out.
Out of the one two to Hoskins. Got him swinging this time. One gone in the eighth. Well, have you ever wondered what players say on the field? Want to see celebrities try to hit a fastball? Are you interested in baseball culture in Latin America? Check out MLB Originals at MLB.com slash originals. Two more hits today for JT Real Muto, including an inside the park home run. Six hits in these four games. So as the Phillies three outs away from looking ahead to the National League Championship Series and a meeting with either the Padres or the Dodgers. Phillies fans start to dream big. Happy to be in the postseason, hoping the run could continue, facing the division oh. champ. Can they win another round? Is this a World Series team? I don't see why not, based on the formula of what they, you know, look, Rob Thompson's done an incredible job. And when you settle the ship and you make the necessary, everyone kind of goes to the beat of the drum when they're running hot. And they've been running hot since June 3rd. They had a little lull there in September. Swanson gets Real Muto. Well, you know that they're going to feel okay as we take a look at uh, what's coming up here later tonight. Top 20 showdown, USC and Utah. 8 o'clock Eastern, going to wrap up a great day of college football on Fox and a great day of sports, period. You know that they're going to feel okay if they're matched up with the Padres, just given that's the five and six seeds. If they're matched up with the Dodgers, well, when they went to Dodger Stadium this summer, they scored 37 runs in four games. And this guy here, Bryce Harper, looked like the best hitter on the planet for the few days that they had him. They won the first three games. They're on the verge of sweeping the Dodgers in a four-game series that weekend. But the Dodgers got a walk-off win in the ninth inning. That was the one game Harper didn't play. He got an injection in the elbow just before that. And then they came back here to Philadelphia. And the Dodgers took two of three. Point is, neither one of those teams are the Phillies going to look at and say, oh boy, we're really going to have a hard time here. They feel like they can beat either one of those teams. They, they have three really, really good starters. And at the top of the rotation, when you can throw out Wheeler and Nola and Suarez has come into his own, I mean, you're never out of a series. So you get a couple guys hot in your lineup, a couple guys hot in your bullpen. And next thing you know, we're talking about why not them, right? Same thing as last year. I, I find it so eerie that we started this series talking about what the Braves did last year. Harper the other way down the left field line. Bryce Harper exclamation. Season for Bryce Harper. Third home run of the day for the Phillies. 8 3. And a lot of handshakes to remember. All kinds of different ones. I don't know how they do it. It's amazing. They've had to practice. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and a full season to hone those skills. Castellanos, line drive center field. Michael Harris is there. On to the ninth inning we go in Philadelphia. They'll be on their feet as Sir Anthony Dominguez. Sir Anthony Dominguez looking for the final three outs of game four. Phillies with a 2-1 series advantage with an 8-3 lead here in the fourth game. Strike one on Dansby Swanson. Dominguez pitched two innings in the first game of this division series. Two perfect innings. Oh, went around and it's 0 2.
Ball. One ball, two strikes. I mean, you're seeing some filthy stuff in today's game by the Phillies and some really, really tough swings. Awful off balance. That's how good the pitching and the pitches that the Braves have had to face. Oh. Good check by Swanson. Olsen and Darno to follow in this inning. Dominguez got ready and time is called by Swanson so he got something in his eye. Two two. Oh, full count. Oh and two to three and two. Challenged him back in there with a the fastball followed off. This game started with Noah Sindergaard going three innings, giving up one run. Then Bellotti, then Ham, and Alvarado, and Eflin, and Dominguez piecing it together. Eight runs of support to make that a comfy track. 3 2 pitch again. One gone in the ninth inning. The Phillies team that was 22 and 29 on June 3rd. Would Joe Girardi continue? Would they make a change midseason? You didn't know which way they were going to go. The only thing that really seemed certain was that it didn't really matter for this year. The Phillies seemed like they were finished. If they were going to make a change, it was going to be to a placeholder. They'd figure it out long term once this year finished. Strike one on Matt Olson. But they make the change on June 3rd, seven games below 500. Handed over to the longtime bench coach Rob Thompson, the longtime baseball man who's never had his chance to manage. Always wanted to, but just kind of was at peace with the idea that that wasn't going to be something he was going to get to do. He takes over. The Phillies go on a winning streak. And over the final several months of the year after that change, only the Dodgers and the Braves win more games than the Phillies. So impressive enough right there, but he gets him to the postseason for the first time in 11 years. They upset the Cardinals in the wild card round. The six seed on the road beating the three seed. Set him up for a date with the defending champs. Underdogs in that series. On the verge of beating them in four games. He simplified things and they worked out a couple things and then started believing look it wasn't like they had the playoffs locked up all the way with three weeks to go they still were fighting and then once they secured it they believed that that that's the kind of team they were and I don't think they they fear anybody. We mentioned what it does to a ball club when you lose games you're supposed to win. I'm talking high probability, not one run games in the ninth. I'm talking three run games in the ninth. And they had a hard time closing those games out for the last couple of years. Sucked the life out of them. Two gone in the ninth inning. They got two guys from the right and left hand side to throw a hundred and are on fire right now. And if that continues. Watch out. Different characters every postseason, different teams. Usually it follows the same arc, though. There are guys that you don't see coming. They get hot at the right time and carry it. The Phillies might be the roster with those characters this year. Through two rounds, they're looking like it.
And the Braves down to their last out. Strike one on Darno. And a game that the Braves really, really needed, and it basically was around their offense. The Phillies have struck out 14. Atlanta Braves. That's exactly half right now. Or a little bit more than half. Yeah. Excuse me. Point taken, though. Phillies pitchers against one of the top offenses in baseball. There's some overwhelming stuff coming out of that bullpen. One and two. And as much a part of this story as the team on the field has been the fans in the stands who have been incredible this weekend. A strike away from getting treated to this journey continuing. Hide your phone, Rosenthal. <laughs> you were wrong, Kenny. The one two pitch. Dominguez throws. Fouled off. Padres or the Dodgers? Will await the Phillies. Either way, they'll be headed west. Game one of the championship series will be either Petco Park or Dodger Stadium on Tuesday. The Phillies will be there for it. Out of the 3 2 from Sir Anthony Dominguez. <laughs> They've all waited this long, and they're going to have to wait a little bit longer into a full count. And capture in the moment. Dominguez tries one more time. Got him. This improbable run, this joyride continues for the Phillies to the National League Championship Series. And they leave no doubt in these two games in Philadelphia. 9-1 in game three. 8-3 in game four. And the Phillies in their first trip to the postseason in 11 years have punched their ticket to the NLCS. 17 days on the road is sure worth all that they went through to get to this point.